Hey everyone, Drew with GeoArm, and I am back to talk to you about the 2GIG GC2E and how to program in the SMKT8E-345 as a low temperature freeze detector. All right, so uh, the first thing you have to know is that the equipment code stays the same, 2058 in this case, and the only thing really that's gonna change is the loop number. So it's gonna go to loop three, and it'll also uh, probably be a different uh, zone type as well. We're probably gonna go 24 hour auxiliary on this so that it monitors for the low temp properly and doesn't report it as a fire. So in this case, go ahead and hit security to get this started. Hit menu, and then you wanna hit toolbox. Once you've hit toolbox, go ahead and enter your installer code. Mine is a factory device, so it is 1561. Once you've entered that correctly, Go ahead and enter the right arrow in the bottom right hand corner of the screen twice. Once you've done that, you should see Installer Toolbox. Go ahead and press on that. Once you have gone into Installer Toolbox, go into System Configuration. Now this is where we start programming the sensor. So I have programmed in previous videos the smoke and the heat detector. My smoke was in zone one, my heat was in zone two. Now we're gonna go ahead and program this freeze low temp as a, uh, into zone three. Okay, hit the down arrow once you've selected whatever zone you want to use. You don't have to use three, it's up to you. Then we're going to select the sensor type. This is where we're going to choose the 24 auxiliary alarm 08 type. So that way it programs as a low freeze temp detector and not programmed as a fire device because it's not in this case. Once you've done that, hit the down arrow. It's going to ask you what, what the equipment type is. So this is a freeze sensor, so go ahead and just select six for freeze and then hit the down arrow. It's gonna ask you for the equipment code, which as I said is 2058 for this E-Series smoke detector. Once you've entered 2058, go ahead and hit the down arrow. Now it's gonna ask you to enter the TX ID. As always, I don't like to do that. I wanna learn it in, because I want the panel to know that it, you know, it's there and I wanna see it acknowledge it. So hit shift. Should see some new options pop up over here. We wanna hit learn. Now we just go ahead and we trigger the tamper on this. In this device, you may have some tabs in the battery series that you can pull that'll do the same thing I just did. Uh, mine would have already been pulled, obviously. But uh, this is how you would do it if those had already been pulled. You just tamper it with the batteries in there. Let's confirm our serial number is correct, 0319937. It is correct. Now we can go ahead and we can restore our back plate and put this over to the side here. Gonna hit OK. Confirm your serial number is correct one more time. Hit the down arrow. It wants to know if this is an existing or a new device. This is a new device in my case, so I hit the down arrow. Now here's where it wants to know the loop number. We're gonna make this a loop three. The low temp freeze sensor sits on, on, on loop number three for this. So we're gonna go ahead and the down arrow after we've done that. It wants to know if you wanna put a dialer delay on this device, meaning an additional delay above the, uh, the panel's delay. Uh, you don't, you probably don't want to do that on smoke and, and, and heat and temp devices. So we're going to go ahead and say no. Hit the down arrow. It wants to know the voice descriptor. So uh, I believe that I had put this as control for the other one. This is in the same area, so I have to call it the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to call it control. Okay. And then we're going to hit the down arrow. Now it wants to know if this device is gonna be a reporting device back to the central station. It is gonna be reporting to central or else we'll never know that the device is actually going through something and, and reporting the, the low temp. So after you've selected enabled, go ahead and hit the down arrow. Wants to know if this device is supervised. I do want this device supervised because if something happens to this thing, I need the panel to tell me that something is going on. So we'll go ahead and hit the down arrow. Now it wants to know if you want to set up a chime for this. We don't want to set up a chime. Smoke, heat, and temp devices, typically you don't want to put a chime on. Hit the down arrow. At this point, you should see your summary pop up and all of the, the specs and changes that you've made. You can press the up and down arrow to view everything. If you see something that you messed up on, it's okay. You can hit edit current. It'll take you back into the programming for that. Now, if you are done with this and you want to move on to the next sensor, you can hit edit next. In my case, I'm completely done programming. So I just wanna go ahead and I wanna hit skip. At this point, it should take you out of that menu, that summary menu, and then you can hit end. At this point, it's got a whole summary of, of things that, that have been changed or not changed in programming or things that you could have changed. I'm not gonna go over that. I mean, you can kind of scroll through it and see. Um, I know that the changes that I've made are changes that I actually want in the panel. So I'm gonna leave the box that says save changes checked. As I said, if you made a mistake, you can uncheck that box and then hit exit, and it won't save anything. 
I do want to save it once again, so I'm going to leave that box checked and then hit exit. At this point, it will go through a panel reboot procedure. That is perfectly normal. It happens every time you program in something new into this 2GIG. Uh, once this boot procedure is done, I should be able to go ahead and tamper this device and you should see it appear on the screen, uh, you know, representing that it is being supervised by the panel. So we'll go ahead and we'll pop the cover. You should see control tamper. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll put the cover back on now. And then the control tamper should go away. All right, there we go, system ready. At this point, it has been learned in as a low temp freeze detector. Um, and you are ready to go. If you have any questions or you guys need help with anything at all, please leave a comment below. Other than that, take care and have a great day. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and click the show more tab underneath the video where you can view valuable links pertaining to this product, similar how-to videos, and our low-cost, no-contract alarm monitoring services.